Go ahead. Go ahead, Uncle. Thank you. Thank you. We bring greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I just want to dwell on the book of Acts 9 chapter. It's a very familiar chapter to all of us. Acts 9, there are five characters mentioned. These five characters are five different individuals and these individuals have got different qualities. If we put these things in our practical life, in the church life, that church, that individual will never be barren. You know, in the book of Acts 9 chapter, there we find the conversion of Shaul, who became apostle, Paul. So we want to see a few individuals. First one we find in the book of Acts, ninth chapter, there are three Ananias mentioned here. The book of Acts, 5th chapter and 1st verse. The book of Acts, 5th chapter, Ananias. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession. What is this Ananias doing? He has got a different character. Half-heartedly serving the Lord. Not only really he, even his wife also. Hypocrisy. Our God do not like hypocrisy. The book of 1st King, 18th chapter and 21st verse, Elijah is asking to the people of God, how long halt in two opinion? If God is true God, serve him. If Baal is the Lord, serve him. They did not answer him a single word. So this Ananya and Sapphira, they were like that. They did not have a perfect heart to serve the living God. Half-heartedly serving the Lord. First Chronicle 29 chapter and 9 verse. First Chronicle 29 chapter 9 verse we find they willingly offered themselves. They offered willingly. It is not somebody has compelled them. Their offering was willingly. And that was accepted by the living God. With a perfect heart, they were serving the living God. First Chronicle 28 chapter and 9 verse. First Chronicle 28 chapter and 9 verse. The Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all imaginations. Dearly beloved, how much we must be very careful in the sight of God because Lord searcheth all our heart and understandeth all our imaginations. Ananya and Sapphira, they thought that uh, by selling their land, bringing some money to the feet of the apostle, they are pleasing the Lord. But it was not so. God understand their thought. Their half-hearted work, Lord has seen. They came to Peter. He was an ordinary man, but chosen by the living God. So Peter is asking there in the, the book of Acts 9 chapter, we can see, Peter, no, 5th chapter, Peter is asking a question. 
you have sold this land for so much only and later on when his wife is coming he is asking her also the same question both of them are telling yes what has happened in their life when peter told you are not lying to man but you are lying to the living god ananias fell down he died sometime when i read this portion acts 5th chapter the ananias death i wonder what power the church had even without asking his wife we do not know whether they had children or not they buried him what an authority the church had that time and then when safira his wife came peter is asking the same question to her also asking you sold it for so much only she is telling yes she also what is peter telling the people who buried your husband they are standing there when they heard it she fell down and died so this ananya the first ananya what we see here because in the book of acts 9 chapter we want to consider that ananya who was obedient to the voice of god so there are three ananias in the word of god first one is this ananya he was half heartedly serving the lord so dearly beloved if you are serving the lord let us serve the lord whole heartedly that is what the lord is expecting from me from all of us another ananya we can see in the book of acts 23rd chapter the book of acts 23rd chapter and second verse acts 23 and 2 and the high priest ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth here we know that peter paul was standing before them and then they were asking many questions here paul the first words paul honestly beholding the council said men and brethren i have lived in all good conscience before god until this day then the high priest ananya is asking to stood by him to smite him on the mouth which is contrary to the law the book of levi 19 chapter 35th verse that is what is written the book of leviticus 19 chapter 35 you shall do no unrighteous in judgment he is sitting there for judging but he is asking them to do unrighteousness saul immediately asking telling what you are doing is wrong you are sitting there in the judgment seat and doing something contrary third ananya we find in the book of acts 9 chapter and 10th verse the book of acts 9 chapter 10th verse this is ananya whom we want to consider he is a disciple of lord jesus christ lord in a vision told him a simple obedient disciple and not known of many people yet he was known of the lord so god is asking him to go to visit saul who was persecuting the church arise go to the street which is called straight and care to the house of judas for one called saul a sarthas behold he prayeth see the conversion the changes what god has brought in the life of saul he was persecuting 
That's what we see in the first verse, nine chapter first verse. Saul yet breathing out threatening and slaughter against the disciple of the Lord went into high priest and got the authority. So this Ananias, he heard of him. When Lord Jesus Christ is telling to go there, he is telling, Lord, he has got authority here also to persecute thy children. And what he is telling? This man, that is what he is telling. This man, he is injurious. He has got authority. But Lord, when he is telling him again, he is obedient. Even though he knew that this man has got authority to take him, yet he was obedient to the commandment of the living God. This is what the Lord is expecting from me, dearly beloved. To obey the voice of God without asking any question. The book of Acts 8 chapter 26th verse we find there Philip was doing a great work in the city of Samaria. Many Samaritans, they heard the gospel. They came to Lord Jesus Christ. But there, Lord Jesus Christ is the angel is telling to Philip, Arise, go to the desert. He could have told, Lord, I am doing a great work here. How many people have come to in the in your name? So I cannot leave this place now. I my presence is needed here. He could have told that. But this Philip he did not say. He just simply obeyed. Do we obey the living God? The book of Acts 9 chapter and 15 verse. Acts 19, 15. Go thy way. It's a command. Go thy way. Philip was ready to obey what the Lord had told him. Without, afterwards, without raising any question, he went. He simply obeyed. And when he is going there, what is Ananias telling in 9th chapter, 17th verse? Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hand on him said, Brother Saul, he was sold this man, but now he is Brother Saul. We all have been brought together in the name of Lord Jesus. That is what he is telling. Saul, you and me, we both have been brought by Lord Jesus Christ. We are one in Christ. There is no difference. Many times what we do, we say, when we come to the experience of salvation, many times we say, oh, this man, this sister, she was like that. She was doing like that. We do not uh, accept them or acknowledge them as brethren or sister. But here, Ananias is accepting him as brother, putting his hand on him, telling, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way has sent me, that thou must receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. That was a command this Ananias received from the Lord and he obeyed. In the book of Genesis 22nd chapter, we find God has told Abraham to take his only son who was born in his old age 
and sacrifice him. He immediately obeyed. He did not ask his wife Sarah, shall I take my son? He did not uh, have a second thought. Oh, in my old age, I got a son. The Lord is asking me to take him and sacrifice there. No. He knew the God who gave me Isaac is able to give more than that. He loved the giver more than the gift. Even when Abraham was 99 years old, the book of Genesis 17, chapter 11, verse we find, when God has told him, when Abraham was 99 years old, to circumcise all the flesh of the male, Abraham could have told, what is Lord? I am 99 year old. I'll ask the small uh, children or some other people to circumcise. No. Abraham was 99 years old and his son Ishmael was 13 years old. Both of them, they circumcised, they were circumcised on the same day without asking any question. They obeyed. God expects us to have such a mind, obedience. And when Ananias did that. What a great transformation taken place in the life of Saul. A great apostle, a great apostle came to this world. The book of 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 4, verse we find, the prince of this world has blinded the eyes of the people. That is what was happened in the life of Paul. Satan has blinded him. But God in his mercy visited him, opened his eyes. He received his sight. Second, uh, the book of Acts 9 chapter 18 verse we find immediately there fell from his eyes it had been scales and he received the sight. He received the sight. And after receiving the sight also, he was obedient to the Lord. If Ananias was not obedient to do that work, God will raise somebody else. But if Ananias was not obedient to the commandment of God, there should have been some more delay. But Ananias was obedient to obey whatever the Lord had told him. When we obey, God can do wonderful things in our life. The book of Isaiah, 6th chapter, 8 to verse asking, Who will go? Who will go? Lord is asking to the prophet, Whom shall I send? What is the prophet telling? Lord, here am I. Here am I. Send me, Lord. Send me, Lord. That is what God is expecting from us. To be obedient. To go in his way. Then Paul became a great apostle. Great apostle. Because Ananias was obedient to the voice of God. Second version we want to consider is Saul. In the book of Acts 9, chapter 22nd verse, 9, 22, Acts 9, 22. And Saul increased the more in strength, confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. What a transformation taking place in the life of Saul. The first verse of, we are fine reading, he was persecuting the church. But now he is telling, no, he is the living God. God has changed his thinking. How did he get this strength? The book of Acts 
9 chapter and 19 words. Acts 9, 19. When he received the meat, what meat it is? It's a word of God. That gives us strength. The book of John's gospel, 6th chapter, 33rd verse. The bread of God which came down from heaven. He ate that. He was strengthened. So many were added to the living God. We know the story of Saul, who later became Paul. How many, what a tremendous work God has done through this servant. Many, many were brought to the fold of Lord Jesus Christ. He was very obedient. He was a persecutor. But once he has received Lord Jesus Christ as his personal savior, he is a changed man. He was a useful vessel in the mighty hand of God. And he was obedient to go wherever the Lord wanted him to go. He was strengthened. And not only really that, he preached Christ in all the places. Once he was persecuting them. But there in their midst, he went there. He preached that this Jesus Christ is the Savior. This was happened because Ananias was obedient to do the voice of God. When we obey the God, the voice of God, then many soul can be brought for God's work. Third person we'll find the book of Acts 9 chapter 27 verse. The book of Acts 9 chapter 27 verse. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. Here, what is this Barnabas doing? People were afraid of Saul. They were not willing to accept him as a disciple. But in that juncture, Barnabas is doing a great work. He has seen the transformation taking place in the life of Saul. He has seen how the Lord has changed his heart, his mind, his attitude, everything. Barnabas has seen. So he is taking him to the apostles and declaring what great thing Saul has done. Who is this Barnabas? The book of Acts, 4th chapter and 36, 37 words. The book of Acts, 4th chapter, 36 and 37. Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought it, the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. See this man's life. He was willing to give whatever he had for the work of God. He wanted to serve the Lord. And God was pleased with his work. What was the nature of Barnabas? John's Gospel, 3rd chapter, 30th verse. He says, he must increase, I must decrease. This was the mind of Barnabas. Barnabas was an apostle. He was serving the Lord. Whereas Saul was not. But he wanted to give his place, all that, to Saul, who became Paul. I must decrease. He must increase. That was his mind. Dearly beloved, do we have, do I have that mind? When some brother young or old, whoever he may be, when they are doing a great work, do we encourage them? Yes. 
many times we do not. We do not want to give our place. Oh no, I want to sit here only. I want to have preeminence in the church, in the place. That is what my mind is. And what is the word of God says of this uh, Barnabas? The book of Acts, 11th chapter and 24th verse. The book of Acts, 11th chapter, 24th. He was a good man, full of Holy Spirit and the faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. He was a good man. That was Barnabas. But he wanted to give everything what he had for the sake of the Lord, for the name of God. He did not want to keep everything with himself, but he wanted that others should come up. I must go down, but others should come up. That is what was the what was that was the mind of Barnabas. And the book of Acts 13 chapter also we find. What is the Holy Spirit telling? 13th chapter and 2nd verse. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work where I, where unto I have called them. They were separated to serve the living God. And because of their obedience, we find in the book of Acts, 12th chapter, uh, 11th chapter, uh, one minute. Uh, forgotten the reference. Because of their labor, they were called Christians. They were together. And because of their labor, people were called Christians. They were following the living God. Ah, yeah. Thank you. 11 chapter, 26 verse. When they had found him, he brought him to Antioch. It came to pass the whole year. They assembled themselves with the church and brought much people Disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Why? This Barnabas and Saul worked together. They did not want to take the glory to themselves. They wanted the name of Lord Jesus Christ be magnified and glorified. And that was their mind. Barnabas, he was counted before Saul. But he wanted to give all his place to Saul. And not only really that, what is the mind of uh, Barnabas? Mark, John Mark, he came to serve with uh, Paul and Barnabas. But after some time, this Mark returned. What is the reason? We do not know. And then there was such a contention between Barnabas and uh, Saul. Saul took uh, Silas and Barnabas took uh, Mark. But afterwards we find because of the labor and love of Barnabas, he was Mark, this John Mark was very profitable. That's why Paul is telling, bring John Mark, he is a very useful vessel to me. Why? Because Barnabas took the pain in bringing him back. How many people come and go away from our church? Do we have that concern that they should be brought back? They also should be encouraged. There may be different reasons when people go away when people do not do the work, but we should not neglect them. Like Barnabas, we must go after them and we must bring them. Second Timothy, 4th chapter and 11th verse. Second Timothy, 4th chapter 
लेवेंथ वर्ष Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee. He is a very profitable to me for the ministry. How Paul could say, because of the labor of Barnabas. If such Barnabas are there in our church, our church will never lack anything. We will be able to grow more and more in the Lord. Fourth person we see is Peter, the book of Acts, 9 chapter, 32nd verse. The book of Acts, 9 chapter, 32nd verse. Came to pass as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came and also to the saints which dealt at Lydia. In fact, uh, Peter is a great apostle. He was in Jerusalem. Many people honored him. Many people feared him. He is one of the pillars in the church. But at the same time, he was ready to go and preach to other people. We find such many, many servants who leave their place and go and give the word of God to different needy people. Visit the needy people. Serve the needy people. They don't uh, center in one place. They are ready to go and minister to the people. That is what Peter did. Peter passed throughout all quarters. Everywhere he was going, wherever is needed, people are needed the word of God. He was ready to preach. People were engaged. Daily wherever such people are needed in our church. God has given such a talents to many of our young people. God has given the word. But we restrict ourselves in the local church only. Other places also people are wanting to hear the word of God. They love to hear. But unless we go, how can they hear? Peter was ready to preach to other people. Another person we want to see is uh, the book of Acts, 9 chapter 36 towards. 9 chapter 36. Now there was a job by a certain disciple named Tabitha which by interpretation is called Dorcas, this woman was full of good works and arms did which she did. Here we find the disciple Tabitha. What was she doing? With whatever substance she had, she was serving the people of God, helping others who are in need. With her own resources. Church has not given anything to her to serve the widows and other people. But she was serving those people who are in need with the resources what God has given to her. And when she passed away, all the people, they came together showing what they have done to her. Do we have anything to show to others? The book of Ezekiel's life, we find the book of Isaiah 38 chapter. When God had told him that you are going to die, Isaiah 38 second verse we find. There, Ezekiel is telling, Oh Lord, remember, remember me. What I did? Do I have anything to tell my Lord? Lord, remember me that I did like that. Tabitha, not for sake of reminding God she did. She was willingly doing whatever she could do. And the book of 
Hebrew 6 chapter 10 verse, God is not unrighteous to remember our good works, what we have done. Whatever good works we are doing, Lord will certainly remember and reward us in his own time. So Tabitha was serving the needy people with her substance. Ananias, we find, he was a obedient servant. He was ready to hear, ready to obey whatever the Lord says. Yes, Lord, I am ready to do. Whatever may happen to me, but I am there to obey you. Saul, he was persecuting the church. But when God met him, he was ready to obey the voice of God. Because of that, many, many people were added to the living God. Barnabas, his mind was what? I must decrease, others should increase. So because of that, many people were brought to the fold of Lord. Even people who went away from the Lord, they also were restored back, brought back because of the labor of Barnabas. Such Barnabas is very much essential in all the local churches, in all the places. Because many people, with the, they may be having some uh, reason when they why they are leaving the fellowship, why they are going away, there can be reason. But many times we are judgmental. We say, oh, he is not coming. Why should I go? But that's not the mind of Barnabas. He went after John Mark, brought him back. And then later on, he was a very useful vessel in the house of God. Peter, he was a great apostle. But at the same time, he was ready to serve the needy people. He was ready to preach. Whatever gift God has given to me, why should I keep it with me? I must give it to for the service of God. So that is what he was doing. And God was pleased with his service. Tabitha, she was ready to serve the Lord with whatever she had. So these five characters we have seen, if that is in me, if that is in the church, that church will never be a barren church, but it will bring glory to God and glory to the living God. May the Lord help us to understand more than what I had told so that we may be able to put our life for the glory of God. Thank you, Brother Rabbi.